Hey YouTube, good morning. Well, um, it's time to clean the observation hive. Um, the observation hive is doing great. Um, I haven't made a video in a few weeks because this was my next step. You know, there is a queen in here that is laying. Look at this capped brood pattern here. This is all from the queen after the swarm. Capped brood here. And what you might not be able to see in the camera, this is all open brood and this is all open brood. So why am I choosing to clean the hive now? Well, the fact that the new queen has all of these resources in here uh, means that the bees are gonna stay, meaning like I'm not disrupting them. They're, they have a mission now and it's raising all of this young. And at the same time, the population before all this capped brood comes out is a little bit low. So the things I need to accomplish, I need to uh, find my queen, which she's in here and I've seen her. I don't think she's in the screenshot right now. I need to mark her so she's easier to see when I use the observation hive. I need to clean up the glass a little bit without smearing it too much. I need to kind of get all of the debris out of here. Um, and I need to kind of clean out these beetle traps. And I'd like to also replace my, uh, my extended release oxalic strips. And hopefully if I have enough bees, and I think I do, I'd like to do a mite check. Uh, I have not um, tested these bees, uh, have not opened this hive since last year um, in April. So, and it looks like I treated in April, um, of 22, it look, it's been a year. I haven't um, messed with this in a while. So basically, I'm gonna walk you along with me. I'm gonna show you how I take the hive out of here. I'm gonna show you outside how I open it up and a little bit uh, of the process just so you can kind of come along. And as I take this off, you'll also get to see a little bit of the mechanics of how this works. So this will be cut up just a little bit. So uh, stand by and watch the next clip. Okay, here we go. Uh, this, um, version of the observation hive I have, you know, has a tube coming in from the outside wall and a vertical 90 degree tube where the bees come in here. Now, obviously in an indoor setting, and some of you may have observation hives inside, um, you don't want the bees to, that are coming in from foraging to get all in your house or perhaps in, in, in my uh, barn here. So I have two metal plates to kind of close this off. One of them is going right in here. And this actually is like a knife edge that's uh, been, been propolized up a little bit. But when I stick that through there, the tube that now comes into the house is now blocked off. So basically the, the bees are gonna start to accumulate. Now on the other side, there's one more spot where I've got, and it's right here. So this is all the way up in my observation hive. So now, there's one little spot where bees could be is in this little 90 degree section. So if I open this right now, the bees that are available to fly into the, to the open space are the handful of bees that are past this and haven't quite gone in the hive yet. So I've got most of them closed off. Closed off. If I just put this uh, top one on here, you know, which basically cuts off the hive, that means when I lift this hive off, the tube from the outside would be open. Now you could go outside and put a rag or something in the outside hole, but I've gone ahead and closed it off in here so that there's a smaller space. Now, to how this hive comes off, I'm gonna take my uh, feeder off and it's empty, so they've taken that entire half gallon. And there's a wing nut up here. And I've uh, put a little, I, I've made a wing nut actually, but the important thing is, is the weight is on the bottom. So I'm kind of just taking the weight off the top and I'm unscrewing this top wing nut. And I'm just gonna show it to you, for example, what it looks like. I got a little washer and I'm just gonna set it back up here. So you see how it's pivoting? It's pivoting on the weight on the bottom. So now I'm just gonna lift this off at an angle. And there's the bees I was telling you about and carry it outside. Now, obviously I don't want these bees going everywhere. So now that I've got it off, I'm just gonna kind of push them down in there a little bit, just so there's only a handful of bees that can actually get out and they'll head outside. But what I want you to see here is you see this little piece of PVC? I've got it kind of chamfered on the top. Um, so it pivots nice. So the entire weight of that observation hive is sitting on this double stack of two by fours, which has a angle bracket support down here. And that's what allows it to pivot. And you can even see a little bit of the propolis and a little bit of the, um, kind of grit that just fell in between the cracks. It's kind of created a little friction point there. But that's a little better sight. And here's my angle bracket here that I put in first. And the other angle bracket is outside with the hive. 
All right, let's go outside and take a look. Okay, so some of you may wonder what it looks like when you close off the observation hive. Take a look, they can't go anywhere, but look at all that pollen that these foragers are ready to bring in. They are raising brood like gangbusters. So I kind of need to hurry up. These guys are gonna get a little bit bored here uh, hanging out, but this is what it looks like outside the hive. Okay. I've got everything ready that I think I need in order to do this. I've got a trash bucket. I've got my razor blade ready to scrape the glass. I've got my, um, my replacement uh, extended release salad stri acid strips. And I've got my uh, mite wash. And if everything looks good. Most importantly, I've got my queen catcher ready if I catch my queen, which I will catch. And I've got my marking pen uh, to mark her red because she was born this year. So just I'm going to kind of do what I do. Fast forward to the boring stuff and just let you listen along as I stop and see and notice things. First thing to do is take off the wing nuts and pull the top off very carefully because this will be very propolized up. And the glass and this wood is all part of the structure. So you kind of don't want to break your glass when you pull it off. So just treat it carefully. Okay, I think I've got it uh, unpropolized, so here comes the glass, straight off. Obviously double checking the queen's not on the glass, and I'll need to clean this up in a few minutes. But you can see when I built this, I kind of beveled the underneath of the frame so the glass would fit and fit smooth. Now here's the first view of the inside of the hive and you can see they're almost doing the exact same thing. They have nectar all up in this side, unsealed brood there. Same exact thing on this side, nectar, unsealed brood. So this queen is laying up a storm. Now is when I need to be very careful. I've got a young queen. I need to double check that she's not on each frame. This is as good a time as any to use my brood minder. The reason these brood minders, if you hadn't seen them yet, they're all channeled out. And if you set a frame in here, they can't go anywhere. So it's got a nice frame rest. It fits a frame. I, I really love these things. You know, they're not really very cheap, but uh, you know, having one around the yard for catching swarms or keeping things like this is kind of nice. You could do this in a brood chamber, no problem. Okay, so for the first time since uh, we were watching the videos on um, when the queen cells were made, I'm now seeing queen cells on the inside. So if you remember, the hive swarmed a couple of times with a clipped queen that probably fell on the ground and got killed or eaten, and they continued to swarm. It was probably with one of the cells that I wasn't watching from the outside, and they swarmed with a virgin. That's most likely what happened. All right, here's the second frame. Let's take a look at the inside. Yep, look at that, more capped brood. And look, more queen cells on, that were on the bottom in the middle of those cells. So this hive is doing really, really good with a lot of capped brood since the swarm. The new queen is weighing, uh, laying up a storm. Now, one other point I wanna make here as I look for the queen. When you put this back together, just like with any hive, you should put it back together in the same order you found it, unless you have a reason to change it. So because they've got nectar in certain spots and brood in certain spots, I'm gonna set these frames aside in a certain order so I remember how they went. Almost a full frame of capped brood there. Still looking for the queen. She's probably running from the light, most likely, but she could be almost anywhere. Okay, on the inside of the bottom frame, all capped brood getting ready to be sealed. They're starting to get a little bit annoyed. You might have noticed I just got popped in the forehead. I'm not smoking much. I'm just trying to treat them as gently as possible. They're, they're very well behaved bees, 
but I might have to put my veil on now that I'm just deep into the hive and they know I'm kind of tearing the frames apart. Okay, I just spotted the queen. So she's up here on this frame on the outside. So now that I've seen her, uh, I'm comfortable. I know she's not in the uh, hive butler over here and I, she's up on this top frame. So I'm just taking off this other piece of glass because I'm gonna need to clean it. And with the way these frames are situated in here, it's a little easier to completely take it apart. Okay, I finally gotten all this propolis broken off the glass and I was very, very careful as best I could. Uh, I don't think I broke or cracked the glass any, but it was popping just a little bit. So that's just a reminder, take your time because that hardened propolis is as hard as any glue I know of. So before I pop this off, I'd like to spot the queen again. I don't see her at the moment, but I'm just gonna be as slow and careful as I can. I don't think she'll be on the glass. No, she's not on the glass, but you can see how much cleanup I still have to do yet. And look, there's even a little bit of wood that stuck with that propolis from the frame. It was stuck. If you look really carefully, look at some of the beetles that they had put into propolis jail that just died. And here's a couple more beetles that were in propolis jail. Fascinating how that works. There she is. Okay, so she's kind of, she knows I see her now, so she's gonna kind of try to run a little bit, but I don't like picking up queens with gloves on. And she just dropped on the ground and she's a flyer, I've got her. So young queens are very flighty. Uh, that was kind of lucky. She knows her way home because she was mated here. If she was a virgin, she'd have probably been, probably been gone. But I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a, I've got a video on how to mark queens, but the way I do it, and as soon as I did this, I can hear them fanning. Here she is. I've got her by three legs and a red dot right on top. And if the marker doesn't work like that time, get it flowing, but don't get it flowing too much because you cannot soak her. Nice red dot. Now, she needs to go into a cage or somewhere else protected. And like I always say, do not put her anywhere where you're gonna set something. So I'm just gonna set her out of the way and in the hive butler for now, okay? So the queen's in the hive butler so I can be a little bit rougher now with these, with these bees. I'm not gonna squish the queen. There are no queen cells and the workers might be a, a little bit more rough but i can start scraping the propolis and if i bump something it's not going to possibly danger or hurt the queen all right i'm probably going to speed up the next cleanup part enjoy it or slow it down if you want to see what i'm saying Okay, I'm back up to let my uh, camera cool down just a little bit. All I was doing was finishing cleaning that. But before I clean this glass, obviously getting the bees 
somewhere where the queen is and she's down on that high butler. It's kind of important so they don't completely get in too much disarray. And for cleaning the glass, I recommend using a straight razor blade and just like you're cleaning any glass, but it's got a lot of propolis on it. And it'll smear, so we're gonna need to clean the glass at the end after we get all this off, but that's how I clean the glass. Okay, I had to get a little bit creative with keeping the sun off the camera. Recording at 5K generates a lot of heat. So now that I've scraped most of the debris off of the glass, just a little bit of glass cleaner. That's all I'm doing now. Okay, I'm done cleaning up this piece of glass, but I want to show you something that I'm going to fix real quick. Do you see the debris here in this crack? I filled most of this with silicone before, but that crack right there accumulated debris. So I just kind of touched it up with a little bit of caulk. Okay, I've uh, caulked this up to close up those gaps I was just telling you about. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put this piece of glass back on so I can start kind of putting it back together as I clean up the other side and I put everything in back in place in order. Okay, I've got the glass all cleaned up and I just wanna make one point before I start working on the frames. You may have noticed I cleaned up a lot of the propolis. Uh, I cleaned up the propolis on the edges. I left the inside of the hive that they propolized up. That's their micro, microbial defense. So I did not scrape every bit of propolis off the hive, just off the glass and off the edges where the joints are. So now the frames need a little bit of cleanup. Um, I'm gonna take them off in the order I did so they go back in the same order. I. Uh, have still got the queen over here and they are bawling on that cage so they know where she is. And if you notice, most of the bees are, are gone. They're over here in the uh, hive butler. So now I'm just gonna clean up some frames. Okay, so now in this last frame, it's a, it's a brood frame, and the reason I went out of order is I needed these bees for my mite check. So very quickly, I just did a shake. The queen is still in her cage, right up here. But a couple bees into the mite check, and let's see how we did. They were off of a brood frame, about a minute shake here. And while I'm shaking, I'm just going to kind of tell you what I, what I see. I, I'm really happy with the way this is uh, with it working out. Uh, I will tell you after about 45 minutes in the sun, the, um, the actual uh, propolis softening up was, was very helpful. So I think that, that that's one benefit, but uh, at the same time, the bees are a little bit testy and uh, the wax, you know, is a little soft, you know, so the propolis gets soft, but so does the wax. Okay, so I don't know what we're going to see here, but let me just tell you, these extended oxalic acid strips are all I've done to this hive. Haven't done any vape, haven't done any Apivar or any other treatments, just these strips. And I've got a separate video on that if you hadn't watched it before. Um, so let's see what we got.
All right. I see two mites. So that's less than 1%. And on a six frame hive, it doesn't, the percentage is the same. I shouldn't even say on a six frame hive. I'm just saying that uh, they had a good brood break, but I didn't do any vaporization. So this is just one year of no mite treatments except for extended uh, release oxalic acid uh, cardboard strips. I believe in it, guys. If you, if you hadn't watched that video, give it a try. It's very inexpensive. You definitely can do it yourself. Uh, and I've pretty much shown you how to do it. But uh, so one last check, and this is the way I double check, is I pour all of this through a sieve, double check there's no mites in there, and I double check. Now, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't know if you can see it. I didn't clip or cut this. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of debris in there, but there's one, two mites. That's debris, that's a leaf. Two mites, guys, less than 1%. I'm really happy with that. Uh, I, was, of course, was, I'm always nervous doing that check, especially without uncut, you know, but I'm pretty proud of how my bees are, are doing with mites this year. Uh, actually, in every year since I've been using this extended acid release. So that was my mite check. Um, let me finish up here. Okay, I've got all my frames in. I've got my uh, extended acid release in there. I've got my beetle traps in there. Now, it's time to put the queen back. Now, the bees will fly back to the hive. They'll find their way. I am gonna try to shake as many bees that are here. That might be young bees in. And there she goes. She's in the middle. So, she's safe. Now, it's a little bit of a game to get bees back into a frame, but. All right, that's done. Let me fan these guys off. This, you can occasionally squish a bee putting the glass back on, but you guys still gotta do the best you can. <laughs> All right, I'm all put back together. Let me take you inside. Before I take you inside, this is who's waiting to get in. All right, here I am with the hive. Now remember, I gotta unplug that hole. Put it on the PVC at an angle. And there it's on. I put my bolt back through and give it the pivot point. A couple twists. and the hive is back. Now, the most important part is let the bees in. Okay, so now that I opened both doors, here they come. So, that is how I clean my observation hive. The bees don't look like they all came back yet, but you can see they're starting to come in through the pipe. They'll work their way in here. They're gonna cover up this brood. The queen is in the middle of these two frames at the moment, like she was when she started. But now she's, oh no, there she is. Right on top of that capped brood. But now she's easy to see with that red mark. Well, I'm Chuck Cook and this is my observation hive. Thanks for watching me clean it. And uh, if you enjoy this type of content, leave me a comment down below. Have a great day.